small size, you don't need to be donating money to the market. There's no honor to me. And uh, some people say, well, you know, there's no scholarships here. You have to pay money to be in the market. Well, I don't actually believe that. As long as you have a simulator, you ought to be on a simulator. Let the other guy donate money. You know, it's about like the, do you know the quote from uh, George C. Scott in Patton where he says, it's not your job to give your life for your country. It's your job to get the other guy to give his life for his country. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, this is sort of the same thing. It's not your job to give money to the market. It's your job to let other people do that. It's your job to take money from the market. So once you get comfortable with that concept, I think we're, in a, we're headed to a good place. And I'd add to my base size and my account only on a monthly basis. This, I think, is important because how do people actually add to their base trading size? Well, I can tell you how most people do it. And you can tell me if this is close to what you know people do or alternatively not close to what people do. But what, they, what happens is they have a good week and they're going along, yeah, this is really cool, I'm cooking. And then they have a nice weekend, they go in Monday. Monday's another good day, right? Oh, it's stunning. Monday night, you get a beautiful night's sleep. You go in on Tuesday, and what do you do? You double the size. Because you know what? You need to do that because you're doing so well, you're going to double the size. And then, does anybody guess what's happening? I can tell by smiling faces that you know exactly what happens is you lose that day on double the size. And you go, oh my God, this is terrible. And then you go back to your small size. And the reality is you never build size because you're not doing it in an organized basis. You're doing it because on a whim, or you know, because you feel confident, or because you feel you should. Um, I would do it only on a monthly basis. I'd, I'm really suggesting you run your trading business as a business, and on that basis, you, you move your size up on a, on a planned, organized, monthly basis. You can, you can take it down in trial month, but in terms of building it up, I would do it on an organized, planned basis once a month. So here's how, that's how I'd handle the money in my trading account. Let's look at how I'd suggest we size trades. So let's look at how we size trades. My suggestion on sizing trades is that everything is a percentage. So looking at sizing trades here, um, I start off with what percent of your trading capital are you willing to risk in a day? And that's a calculation that you'll make for yourself as to how comfortable you are with the risk, your, how you're going to do it. I think you need to do that in advance and not on the fly. In other words, these are things that, that should be decided with calmly when ahead of the market day, not during the day. And I think it should be about 1 to 2 percent and no more. In the 90s, um, as I said earlier, I worked at uh, a company that was owned by Trout Trading Fund, and I don't know anything about how Trout Trading Fund worked or operated or the trading system or anything about that. But what I do know is they had, in their risk management, they had a, a, like a circuit breaker. If they were ever down 1 percent in a given day, they shut everything down. In other words, they didn't wait and see why that was, or gosh, is something wrong, or what can we do to fix it. They shut everything down. And I think that's what you ought to do, is that if you, if you have this percentage, whether your percentage is 1% or 2%, whatever it is, if you're down that percentage, you should just say, that's it. And I have a, a fairly good history of uh, working with people where they extend limits. And let me tell you my story of extending limits. And Dan, I think, probably remembers this. We had this theory in the proprietary trading business that we would give everybody a small limit. And then when they hit the small limit, they could, they could ask for more money. They used to call it getting more juice. And so they'd come up to me, because I was, the, I was in charge of that, and they'd say, Jeff, you know, I feel really good. I know I've, I've lost my limit, but I feel really good. We've got the rest of the day going. Give me some more juice. And so I would generally give them more juice if they didn't seem completely freaked out or, or you know, completely disjointed in their their appearance and their demeanor, I would give them more money. And I thought that was smart because it gave a guy a chance to calm down, rethink things, and come back in, a, in, a, in, a, in an organized way and bring back the money. Um, and so we did that with our newest traders, and we did it with the senior traders. And so I had traders that had a $250 limit that would ask for another $100, and I had traders that had a $10,000 limit that would ask for another $3,000. So it was a broad cross-section. And I did it, and it seemed to work because, you know what, I remember people fighting back heroically to at least break even and more. I mean, I remember this perfectly. I thought, you know what, this is, this is something. And then I thought, we, we did this over years. So then I thought, you know what, I better start keeping track of whether giving people more money once they've hit their loss limit makes sense. And so my supposition was that the traders that were new traders, it probably didn't make sense to give them any more money. Because if you gave them more money, they probably just lost it. But you know what, it wasn't that much money. And, you know, so I didn't feel that bad about it. I, I thought that's what's going to happen when I start keeping track of it. 
But you know, our great traders, I knew they were able to fight back because I remembered the times where I'd give them, you know, they'd be minus 10,000, I'd give them $2,000, and they'd end up the day plus 3,500 or even even is a pretty big, pretty big move. So I, I had this perfect memory of how this worked so well. So I started keeping track of it. I kept track of it for like a year and a half, and then it was incredibly clear. Certainly, the, the new traders, it made no sense to give them any more money. You're better off telling them to go home because then nothing good is going to happen by giving them more money. If you give them more money, all they're going to do is lose it. But here's the thing I didn't count on. For our best traders, the people that I remember giving them three thousand dollars and having them heroically fight back and be only down, you know, a thousand dollars when they were down ten thousand or whatever the numbers were, it made no sense. It made no sense for anybody, and it was a lesson for me because our memory of these things is imperfect. And I think it's imperfect because we're so excited when somebody fights back. I mean, I was excited; they're excited. It's like such a such a joyous thing. We remember that perfectly, but what we don't remember is all the times where the great trader was down 10,000 and he cleaves the day minus, let's say, 13,000 or 14,000. It doesn't sound like much, except at that point in the day, he's trading like a crazy person. I mean, there's, there's a, all these commissions that are generated in the process, so it's a, a lot that happens. There's more to the dynamic of this than just the money. There's the additional cost of having him do this. And there were times where it went horribly wrong, where, let's say, the, I gave the guy the extra $3,000 and he, he lost another 10. Um, so the point is, what do we learn from that? What I learned from that is that you're better off with a small limit. If the market's going to reward you, let it reward you. You want it to reward you fully. But if it's not rewarding you, if it's instead penalizing you, only let it penalize you a little. Because once again, it's not your job to lose money in the market. It's this other guy's job. It's not yours. And so if you lose less, that would always be better. That would be one of the things that it would be a truism. If you lose less, it's always better. If you make more, it's always better. So we're trying to do that. So I wouldn't, I would always do it as a percentage. These percentages may seem small to you. To me, they're appropriate because you shouldn't lose very much and you should be risking this kind of a percentage of your capital. So one to two percent. So we start off saying, you know what? I'm gonna risk one to two percent of my trading capital. Once again, trading capital is not the money in your account. It's your total capital that you have. Um, and then you look at it, what are you willing to lose on a given trade? Once again, this should be a percentage. Something like a quarter or a half a percent of your trading capital. The reason I say that is that if you, if you said you were going to lose a quarter of a percent, let's say, and you're willing to lose 1% of your capital in a day, you're willing to invest 1% of your capital in a day, that means you can have four full stop outs before you quit trading. So that's pretty good. If, if, you, know, if you have four full stop outs, something's not working. And, and, and my theory is, it's not, a, it's not important to find out what's not working. In other words, is it the market? Is it me? Is it you know, Jupiter aligned with Mars? Who cares? The, the, the point is, we're losing money, and, and that's all that matters. And we want to do less of that. Um, so in terms of what are we willing to lose in a given day, once again, it, it translates to a percentage. And it should give you some reasonable number of tries during the day, but not too many. Because if it's going to work, um, it's going to work. If it's not going to work, you know, you might as well just go do something else. Um, and so, how do you come up with appropriate size? Um, you start off with what you're willing to risk on a trade, then you divide that by the appropriate risk per contract. So, in other words, if you have a strategy, let's say that that requires, you know, I've used the example here, four S and P stick, S and P ticks, um, that would be fifty dollars. So if you're willing to risk on a trade, the percentage is quarter percent is $250, and your, your strategy says that your stop out would be $50 a contract, then it would be appropriate for you to trade five contracts. So it's all just, it's all just moving this down as a percentage. Does that make sense if I describe that? Uh, okay, good. So there we are, in summary, don't be afraid of the money. You know, people say you, you shouldn't pay attention to the money. Well, I don't know that I agree with that because, you know, we're not curing cancer here. This is actually about money. And so um, we might feel differently if we were curing cancer, but we're not. And so this is about money. And the object is, is to make as much as you reasonably can given the risk, the risk tolerance, the amount of risk that you have to take. But the thing is, instead of saying don't pay attention to the money, I think what you really need to do is not be afraid of the money. And so how do you not be afraid of it? You'd be afraid of it by, have plan by having plans for it, by planning how you should approach the money in your account, the money in your trading, so that you're not afraid of it. And if you handle the money in your, in your trading capital like a professional, 
you can enjoy a great long career in professional futures trading in both good times and bad.